Good morning, folks, and welcome to a live episode of Flaming Freedom. Those of you who are listening to the downloaded podcast, we love you too, but we'd love you more if you listen to us live next week. We're here every Sunday from 10 a.m. to noon on the Liberty Radio Network. This is Flaming Freedom, as I said. This is your host, Dale. And Lauren as well. And I, once again, forgot to switch. It's just the two of us this week. Switching the, oh, to, to me, to my... Yes, well, it was on I, you, but it was I'm with, not with the text that said the show was coming up. I do that oh, every day. I do I it all gotcha. the time. I'm not used to being this close to the camera without proper <laughs> preparation, you are the I guess. the star, Lauren. Oh, boy. You are the star oh, of the boy. show. I don't know. I, ha- I haven't seen what this camera angle looks like. So. And this, this is excellent because today it's just you and I, which is a privilege. Yeah, this is really cool. Like, I've... I, did you you realize actually we haven't sat in this exact configuration since October, two thousand thirteen? I didn't know that. I that was the last time. It was actually my very first time speaking into a microphone in this studio. I haven't kept up with that. You were talking about um, Game of Thrones, or oh no 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 no, the one with the guy that makes meth. What is that called? Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. You were discussing Breaking Bad. I love that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how it's how he is Jesus or something. I I kind of I started watching it all over again from the beginning, and I kind of. Maybe got halfway through of the series and right. kind of fizzled, but it, it's it's good. If I'll, you haven't watched to, Breaking Bad, I think it's all on Netflix now. I'll have to get get on that. I'm not sure. So I he, think it might be on Netflix. I think it's it was on Netflix, but it, not everything stays there forever. So yeah. Well, we have a really cool show. Oh, do you want to? So uh, that's an important announcement. I'll let you. Do you want to give it? Uh, sure. In fact, I, I, you can probably take it down from the website at this point, but I had this like announcing a full two hours of, of me. Here I am. (laughs) It's, it's actually not as exciting as on the, on on the first time we've, we've had a show with just you and I for a while. So it's probably a good thing that I won't be sitting here by myself for the last segment. That is, yeah, no, it, everything works out, doesn't it? Well, my, what I said before the show was normally it would be 70% me, 15% guest host and 15 percent lauren right and now, now I, it can be 70 I, 30 <laughs> yeah there you are it, that might even be generous yeah it no, may be I, worse I, look than forward to it. I hope i can keep up <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be quite a sprint all right but uh but yeah no i'm really excited that i can actually stay for the whole show now okay so i'm not gonna look at it but pod crush is the urban dictionary word of the week mm, yeah uh, since i know what it is you're, you can guess this week right i'm not i'm not gonna look yet a pod crush. Is that like when you have a crush on a on a minor celebrity because they're on a podcast? Yes, you got it. First guess. <laughs> See, I, there's a lot of people that have a pod crush on me. Yeah, well, that's I why I, I thought that I should put this on here. No one actually tells me that, and I have no evidence for that, but I just assume. Haven't you gotten like secret and an- anonymously written like love letters or something? Or maybe that's hate mail. I, I get confused. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I fantasize about that. Is that close enough? Oh. Um, to have a crush on a podcaster. There's probably a word for that, too. Here's the quote. It says, or the uh, sample uh, usage in a sentence. I downloaded all of the back episodes of Flaming Freedom and realized I have a total pod crash, pod crush <laughs> on A pod Dale crash is another thing. And Lauren. That's, the, that's what it says. Hmm. Crush on two yeah, are you, people. Are you believing me? Are you believing my? Is yeah, that's what the, Urban Dictionary the example says. We in could the change Urban that. We could. We need to change it. Urban Dictionary allows you to edit stuff, doesn't it? That's what it says on Urban Dictionary. Go mm-hmm. check it yourself if you don't believe me. Mm-hmm. Or, but don't really check it. Just trust me on that. That it says that under Pod Crush. So I, <laughs> I feel like the, the term probably came from like uh, people who have other podcasts and they have like a crush on or like and not just like a sexual crush but like intellectual crush maybe like a- I, I think that's the best i can hope for is that people have an intellectual crush and that might even be pushing well, there, there are other podcasters that i admire who i i wish to live up to their their level or at least like part of their level of yeah of podcastitude yeah well, i a, wish i could word. speak with the conciseness and clarity of antigone on sex lies and anarchy oh but then I have to, that might mean giving up show medicine, which I partook of today, by the way. Oh, dear. What's your, what's your dose? Oh, should we talk? Well, we can't talk about, well, yeah. We, we can, can talk, talk about, about show that. medicine. That's right. We're actually not on the radio. Well, we are. We are. It's okay. Oh, it's complicated. So we're sort of on the radio. On the Liberty Radio Network, which you should check out at lrn.fm. 
And you can find out about all kinds of other great shows that are also broadcast live via that. We're, we're live via the Liberty Radio Network and also via Ustream if you want to watch us live. So th- those are both options. In a way, it's a lot better than radio, I'd say. Yes. We're at a whole other level. Yes, exactly. Um, so so the show medicine um, makes me relaxed a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but it also Mish, makes me mirror, sloppier. Mirror, mirror, mirror. Right. It makes yeah. me a little sloppier and it makes me talk too much over the other. Guests. Right. And you're like asking me to Google Quandry and I'm like, I'm sorry, Dale. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I can't Google it. <laughs> it's a quandary. It's a quandary. It's a quandary. I actually listened to that episode. See, now we're talking that, about other that podcasts. That was the drunkest I've ever been on a podcast when I was kept saying I it think was a, that's it's true. a quandary. <laughs> Uh, Everything's a quandary when you're, it, when you're on drunk. enough show medicine. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, so what do we have in store for today? Okay, real quick. <laughs> I'm going to go through them real quick. We're okay. going to talk about LGBT rights around the world. Most mm. people are familiar with where we are in the Western world, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of progress yet to be made. Uh, we're going to talk about someone who's upset with your name. They don't like Yeah. I, we'll I, I went and read through it. I, I'm still confused. No, no, you wouldn't. It's it's an uh, inside joke. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> it's inside. It's okay. an inside joke. Okay. It's not right. because you're stupid. Because you're not stupid. Wait, I, oh, what are you trying you're to say? You're not stupid. Okay. It's well, because it's an inside joke. Uh, the ACLU and Chelsea Manning, which um, I'm going to let you lead up because you put that, and I don't know what it's about yet. Okay. Do gays have the evil eye, which is about a... a person who died and they won't accept his eyes because there's still stupid regulations in place for people who have had sex men who have had sex with other men so we'll get into that uh so someone out there has no eye because this teenager had like sex one time or something and they can't get an eye donation what, from his was, body was it the evil eye because then that that might not be so well bad. that's me being creative with the title i added that oh uh, a viewer comment on supernatural shipping. This is this topic goes on and on. This is the topic that never dies. Well, that's because nobody knows what it means. No, shipping. Well, I'm like I'm just picturing some like FedEx guy with mystical powers. We've supernatural shipping. No, we've adjudicated Ba-dum-chi. people about what it means, though. Yes, and and there's remain the controversy remains. So we will we'll bang this out a little more. I will say this to the if this person is actually listening to the show. Uh, your comment makes very good sense, and I kind of I'm, I'm kind of on your side actually. I think you're I think you're probably right. And Sabrielle is not here today, but we'll make sure that she sees the comment. And I think you have some very good points to make. So I'm I'm giving you some kudos there, and we'll 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 read that comment. Mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy as a tabletop RPG gone wrong it has nothing to do with LGBT, has nothing to do with libertarianism, but we're kind of geeks on this show. I thought and that sometimes was a, we talk about RPGs. I thought that was a libertarian film. <clears throat> Have it's you heard not? that? I don't know. Guardians people of say, the Galaxy? No, pretty much people parts, say that about every film. There's that like, one. There is a section in it where they go to this place where there's, they say there's no laws, there's no regulations, anything goes. Mm-hmm. And it's actually a really cool place. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But it, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that. So name, name any I film. Think What's the first film that comes to your head? libertarianism in a lot of places. Right, exactly. Go ahead. Name a film. This libertarian? No, pick any film. No, no, just the first one that pops into your head. Ready, go. Uh, The Little Mermaid. Libertarian. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> what? Well, all right, tell me how it's libertarian. Because like she's she's tra- like she's in po- <laughs> so there's this this, this this structure. You got me. Where there's like the king, and she doesn't want to be a part of the king. She wants to be part of this other world. Like that's her own world. It's it's hers. Like she ha- she's in control of it. Part oh. of the world. So um. It, 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 you, you've got a very good point. Like, libertarians see libertarianism everywhere. Yeah. I did not, nothing, see, I was actually watching Guardians of, of the Galaxy, and there's elements of libertarianism in there, but there's elements of libertarianism in anything, mm-hmm. right? Maybe what defines libertarianism is, is, is their consistency, right? Because a lot of people are inconsistent about their views about things. We'll see. We'll have to. I'll have to we'll, get we can back talk here. about this when we come back. Okay. Libertarian identity. We'll, we'll do Guardians of the Galaxy first, and we'll talk about that, even though it's the last topic. This is Flaming Freedom with Lauren and Dale. We'll be back in a moment, so stay tuned.
I asked some of the biggest fans of Flaming Freedom where we discuss LGBT topics from a liberty perspective what sorts of things they'd done to support the show. I've been mining butt coins since they were pennies apiece. I've donated thousands of dollars of butt coin to Flaming Freedom. I gave Dale my handicap placard. Pretty sure that's a felony. We handed over our firstborn. I don't know what they're up to with that boy, but I'm sure it's wholesome. There's too many buttons. I don't know which button you want me to push. I told you already it's a knob. Raise the gain on microphone too, you worthless brat. I have flamingfreedom.com tattooed across my labia. And I'm a prostitute, so all my clients see it. Wow, that's something. But there's a much easier way to show your appreciation. Just click like and share the episodes on your favorite social media networks. Oh, here we go with the wanting and the needing. And can you do this for me? And can you do that for me? My index mouse finger is all achy from the gout. I can't be We do put a lot of work into making a good show for you. Please, just click like and share. That's all we ask. And we are back. Thank you for waiting patiently, folks, and listening to some messages from the sponsors on the Liberty Radio Network. This is your host, Dale. And Lauren. And Lauren yes. normally would get about 15% of air time to speak. And then the guest co hosts would get about 15, maybe 20, because we kind of give them priority. I'm, going for, I'm trying for the full 30 this time. And then I hog the rest. I'm going to take it. That's fine. No, you're, you should. <laughs> you should. Because that person with a pod crush on you right? needs it. They, <laughs> they, they need got that a pod in their crush life. On you? And if you stop... Well then, we'll we'll stay. We'll maintain the status quo. Let's be reasonable here. You're, Lauren's younger and better looking than me. Uh, and I, oh, both, yeah, that's right. I am younger. Both. I forgot. And when I put the thumbnail, I make sure the thumbnail includes you. The thumbnail. When I was doing back when, right? You know when you're looking for at a video. Right, no, a I'm thumbnail. familiar with that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if I make sure that you're in that thumbnail, it gets more hits. Oh, do you remember I actually put a post up about this? It was... Yes. Um, well, women in general, you said. And it's true. It's, well, yeah, women in general. But there was one, like, way back... Because y'all know I'm... Um, <laughs> y'all. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm not really... Um, oh, there you go. That's okay. You're good. We just had a little bit of a, uh, <laughs> a, fl- a fluid mishap. I had this in a bad spot. Dale, Dale. Oh, dear. I might not be able to type anything now. No, no, no. It's going to be fine. Everything's great. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we have cameras so that people can watch all of our stuff. So no, a long time ago, I, I was actually on the show. Towel. I don't know, man. I had a um, but we were. <laughs> this is really exciting stuff. Go on. If you were watching live, you you would see all kinds of action. We should totally put this, this to is, music. This is later. the downside to show medicine. Um, <laughs> it's a quandary. All medicine um, has side effects. So long, long, long at the beginning of my transformation transition whatever i don't know i don't know what people all the lingo for trans stuff but um i think i just like wore normal clothes and i just found it really really funny and i was really shocked that there was all these different hits on the Ustream. like oh this one had 16 views this one had 15 views this one had 20 views this one has 64 views it was like triple the 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 size of of all the rest of them and it was just because like i was sitting there in like my, you know, and like it was kind of focused down like below my neck. It wasn't really like a an image of my face. It was just. Is this like, because guys like, are more visual than women? I don't. Like women don't, are no. appreciative of so many other things in a guy, like the, his no. scent, his well, I, his, right, his ability right. to make money and buy them things, uh, his penis size. Well, it definitely does catch your um. attention. <laughs> I, I guess the the but like the shape or the I don't know what it is, but yeah. I, for some reason, yeah, there was just way more more views of that one than the others yeah i wonder if it's because guys are more visual and just more of sexually driven but it was just really place. funny because there i am like you know way at the beginning of of transitioning like very very rarely even like being out as female and i'm like why the hell am i getting all these like views like i, I just didn't get it i was like oh. yeah you said but this it was about like, it was one of my first glimpses into that world of like oh wow men think this way about you, women i had no idea you told me to uh you told me on when i'm posting videos if i put in and i can control our thumbnails because we're a partner on youtube we've gotten enough views that they invited us to be a partner so i did that and that gives us a little bit more we can make longer posts so all of our episodes are now viewable on youtube Mm -hmm. and the other thing is that uh, anytime i make put women in the thumbnail that seems to help (laughs) 
Yeah, I pointed out. <laughs> Dramat- like I, exponentially more views. The one with the naked women with their arms up and the yes, arm, armpit extolling hair. the virtues of women's armpit hair. Yeah, that one. Hair. That one's really gotten a bunch. Twenty five hundred views. Mm. Versus, uh, let's see, straight guys getting gay married has gotten a little over two hundred views. Yeah, and even Roman Helmets fraternities and rape culture has an extremely provocative hunky guys thumbnail has about a hundred views. <laughs> No, it varies, though. I mean, it varies a lot. It's, it's not the only factor, clearly, because Child Sex Robots for Pedophiles is another video we posted, which is it's an entire episode where we talked about that subject. That has almost a 1,000 views, and it has... That's disturbing. Well, that's because people are afraid. They're like, what is this? Like, oh, this, this was born from my head. I was like, hey, what if there was a child sex robot? On that? But <laughs> no, I got it backwards. I reversed the No, no, the that term. happened later. That was a later episode. Oh, it was. Oh, okay. yeah. Because that I actually feel, came up during sexy. Can, can supernatural we take a minute to just, just? I need to just say how how bad I feel that I came up with that idea, <laughs> and it was that completely accidental. Like I switched the words around, so I came up instead right. of like. No, no, tri- I understand. You weren't like trying child to invent- robots for pedophiles. I think I said sex or pedophile sex ro- robots, pedophile sex robots, or something. Right. Imagine if they made a robot just to like Pedi- rape kill children. <laughs> no, okay, so yeah, no, it's <laughs> like the most evil. <laughs> most evil thing i can possibly fabricate in my mind which is what makes it so hilarious <laughs> just it's, like making a robot that goes out and rapes children. don't laugh at it it's not funny <laughs> stop laughing it is, at it no this is, this it is, not is funny. the funniest stuff is the darkest stuff that, you have to laugh i, I know it's a I venting know. it's a, it's like I, a venting mechanism i just feel bad like the more disturbing it is the more upsetting it is the funnier it is this is why horror movies are almost often interspersed with, movies are with comedy. I mean, the movie, like, Cabin in the Woods is hilarious. And it is really dark. It's, I, like, about murder. Yeah. And, you know, like, just graphic murder and all, horror, all this horror movie stuff stacked up with end of the world type stuff. Oh, yeah. No, it's, and it it's is the hilarious. worst. It's the worst. And that's why it's so but funny it's, to me. Like, like, like it's Sabriel. A fair... uh, I love Sabriel. Mm-hmm. She still doesn't get it. She doesn't get why rape jokes are funny. Oh. And I'm like, well, rape... and, and when, when, oh. and then the, like, the idea that if you tell rape jokes, that's an indicative of a rape culture. I'm like, no, no. The fact that we tell rape jokes is indicative of the fact that we don't have a rape culture. Because as soon as rape is accepted, it's not funny anymore because it's not dark anymore. Do you get it? And this is why pedophile robots are hilarious. Well, maybe... They're like the worst. They're like the darkest, so, most pointless. I don't know. Maybe there's a few different types of rape culture. That's maybe the there's like the dark comedy. rape culture or like the, the actual rape rape culture. And then there's, there's rape also culture like, in prisons. There's not a rape right, culture. There's like, like Rape culture is a myth. There's rape comedy culture versus rape culture. I right, think but the reason it's funny, varieties the of... reason rape is funny and common and the reason it keeps coming up is because it's dark. It's because our society doesn't accept it. Like, as soon as we have a rape culture, which I, I don't, we're never going to have one, but as, if we had a rape culture, rape wouldn't be funny. It would just be, a, it wouldn't be funny anymore because it wouldn't be dark. I'm sorry, what is a rape culture? Rape culture is basically the premise that but we, you said we, a the, rape that we, culture. We're, we're saying the the rape the whole myth of rape culture that we have this pervasive rape culture in the Western world. Mm-hmm. The whole myth of that is based on the idea that we're accepting of it that it's a, that it's an okay thing and that we think it's that we treat it as a normalized thing as opposed to a crime. Right. No. That that that's I bullshit. that I get. It's BS. And I think though that you can have a culture. I, of I love. People, how I use the. Cu- I use the. I use the uh, censored acronym <laughs> after I already said the word. No, that's good because so, some of us yeah. don't know what all the acronyms mean. So it's, <laughs> it's know very. What BS it's, means. No, it's very educational. No, it's not. I. There was a point in my life when I didn't know what BS meant. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. But do you understand? I, I'm over do you now. understand? Comedy. No, I, I, I do understand it. But like, you can comedy still have. Is a re- this is in general. Why comedy rape- is a relief valve. For things that are, would otherwise make us upset or right, sad, right. and it's like we have to laugh oh. at them, so that we feel okay. Okay. So like it's a coping mechanism, and that's why rape is hilarious. Child rape is even funnier because oh. it's worse. Oh dear. It's darker, I'm and that's why I'm so grateful that you came up with pedophile robots. Thanks. This is Flaming Freedom. This is your host Dale and Lauren. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Flaming Freedom. This is your host Dale. And Lauren, too, and we have a special guest. Wait, and, which, I haven't even adjusted the, the cams for Neil, I just <laughs> oh, realized. Yeah. He's hidden. So uh, this is, we'll, we'll figure this out. 
Now I can't use the conjoiner you can't and. See. You can't see him. Oh, now, wait. Now that he he's kind of popped in we on us unexpectedly. Just start saying, so we're going to let so him. I, I just have to say and Neil. Dale and Neil. Neil. Oh, I just messed that up. Dang it. I'm oh, excited to have. horrible. It's weird sitting this it's way. This looks horrible. I, I, I'm usually in your chair. Uh, this is horrible. This what's is horrible? A what's wrong over there, Dale? N- Tell us what's wrong. Nothing. I'll fix this. I'm going to make it so that you I know it's always a disaster when I come on. That's no, what, it's, that's it's, why it's, I'm so frequently on it. So, no. Now you're sort of. Now you just need to move your Thanks, your no, laptop. No, but like disasters are funny. We were just talking about how rape jokes are funny and how it's funny because rape of, jokes are it's hilarious. really dark. So rape jokes. Oh, are that, that means that you're if you if it's a disaster when you're here, then that's that's funny, right? Yeah, I exactly. Know, I don't know. Rape jokes L- are proof. Really My point was that rape jokes are proof that we don't live in a rape culture. You want this? Because when we live in a rape culture, they will not be funny anymore. And it, mm-hmm. and if you don't get that, you don't get comedy. You don't get that comedy is dark always. It's just degrees of darkness. It's just degrees of how dark it is. That's all. That's all there is to mm-hmm. it. So let's Guardians of the Galaxy. Neil came in at the perfect time because he hates this subject completely. But <laughs> Guardians, of the, he probably hasn't watched the movies. Probably not going to. Well, you, no, of course I wouldn't. And uh, which which there's a whole other topic that I wanted to get into sometime with you, but you, I haven't been able to get you on the show for so long. That we couldn't get into it, but I was going to talk about how you're not. Yeah, you're blocking him really badly now. Oh, uh, how I, you're not, see, uh, I'm not. How you 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 how you are somehow against science fiction, and yet, and yet, <laughs> you're against science fiction, and yet you believe in like the singularity and so much of technology. I'm not was, against science fiction. Was I'm a, just against bad, uh, <laughs> bad science fiction that revolves around superhero characters. Well, why do you see that? Why do you say that when superhero science is a thing? Like we're already there's already like massive amounts of technology into genetic engineering, into replacement limbs and things like that. That uh, are all these things are foretold by science fiction. I'm all for it's, heroic it's a view into characters. The no, I'm all for heroic characters. But most of these superhero uh, flicks that are out there have completely unscientific foundations for their supernatural ability there, there's nothing special about a superman uh, flying reverse well, around the world to turn back time i mean it's just complete and utter bs you know that Every i gotta give you that i gotta give you that superman's like the worst superhero ever unfortunately he started it but uh, you know and, and since then people have come up with much better concepts for superheroes that had that had weaknesses and had potential for storylines and that were based on, to a greater degree, on actual science and and at least uh, potential science, right? Uh, right, right. Well, um, first of all, has there ever been a time travel movie that actually makes sense? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, no, there exactly. hasn't been. Right? It's, it's such no. an abused gimmick. And like maybe pr- there's one. Uh, pr- it's called Primer. That's worth watching. Right, but that kind of gets into why it's such. A, Primer actually gets kind of meta about time travel and why it's such a Right, it's a primer on time travel. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's very so let's, meta. Let's get into title. this though. We uh, so Guardians of the Galaxy was a was a great movie. I enjoyed the movie. I it, it caught me by surprise. I didn't like the trailers that much. So someone mentioned, imagine Guardians of the Galaxy as a tabletop role playing game that went horribly wrong, and then it actually kind of fits. And then it they totally made, fits. and then they made it into a, a film. Right. Right. Oh, no, I, I think I understand now. Right. So there's like, there's like Carrot Man and like <laughs> Cheesy yeah. Dog. And, and yes. oh, okay. Yeah. This makes sense now. Right. So here's the uh, Tumblr post. Upon second viewing, I have definitely concluded that Guardians of the Galaxy is even better when you imagine it as a tabletop campaign with an increasingly frustrated dungeon master who's sick of being interrupted. And here's some here's some text. He says, "GM, roll roll two d ten, Peter. Uh, red high twelve. GM, you have twelve percent of a plan. <laughs> and then the entire imagine the entire prison break scene is just Rocket's player rolling knowledge checks at, on every turn until something works. Right? They're trying to break. He's just like trying all these different things until finally something he makes his roll. You realize I haven't seen this, right? Oh, yeah." Oh. I thought I explained we should that. Avo- this is actually new enough. We should. This is new enough. We should probably avoid spoilers, but it's too late. No, I'm no, I'm done. not really upset that like I've. 
Spoilers don't bother me at all. Yeah, like, I should have saved me, this to the last segment. Like that I knew way. that Bruce Willis was was dead when I watched the film, but I still watched it. Like I don't. It's okay. It sense. doesn't. It doesn't bother me. All right. No, it bothers me. I, I, it bothers me though to spoil things for our listeners. For other, for, so right, I apologize. Right. And now we had a bunch of listeners just stop listening to the show because we're talking about. I know Guardians, you keep doing that. You keep yet. like turning them off. Yeah. Either yeah. that or I flash my penis at the webcam. One way or well, another. That, w- that wouldn't turn them off. That would do the opposite, right? You haven't hey, seen my by penis. the way, one of, <laughs> one of the things one of the things that got deleted from show prep when Windows ate everything uh, was next week is topless. Wait a minute, hold on. Like National Topless Day or something, Sunday the twenty fourth. Do you know so, who organizes that? Uh, I, I, well, I used to. The Are Raelians. We, okay. Do you do you know who Rail? Uh, no, I don't. Here Rael we go. Was, is that short for Australians? <laughs> Here we go. Get ready. It's Australians, right? No, no, no. Um, Rael, which is not his real name but is assumed given space name i guess uh was a uh, race car driver in france who in the 1970s was uh allegedly visited by aliens who uh told them uh of uh the history of humans which are a created species by um extraterrestrial intelligence so yes humans are intelligently uh designed but not by any god. It's a completely atheistic mm. religion, but rather extraterrestrial life. So they have chapters all around the world, and one of the things they celebrate is sexual lib. So um, they uh, they love going topless, and they organize <laughs> National right. Topless Day. I'm a better naturist than you, by the way, Neil. Why is that? Because I don't worry about my windows being open, and I go around naked. I okay. Don't care. I don't care. Like you worry, like oh, neighbors might look. At, neighbors aren't looking in my windows, first of all. And like at at night, mm-hmm. at night, if your lights are on, yep. you're, you're gonna you're gonna be very visible. Yes, but in the daytime, true. it's it, people have to really look hard to be. And if they're spying on me that much, then they want to see me naked. So I'm not worried about it. Like in the daytime, you can't really see into people's windows very easily. Yeah, I don't worry about it. If I get up in the morning and I'm naked from sleeping. And I'm in the habit of sleeping naked now. It took a while to get comfortable with that. But I'll probably put underwear back on again in the winter. Just because I feel a little bit warmer or something. Are you comfortable with being naked in front of a Ustream broadcast? Uh, no. Uh-huh. We'll get blocked from Ustream if we do that. That's a policy. Well, I want to... We I, can't do it. I, read, I spent a while reading oh. all of the policies last night. And I think I could do topless. Yeah. Uh, you I think, think I could. Well, what what is Ustream going to do? I know. Then we will can they make block a big that thing one video. Yeah. Or right. will they or will they shut us down? Shut us down. They might, but then that could make a huge like case, right? And then people, I don't want I don't want yeah, to fight a case. I don't, I don't want to. So <laughs> I don't know. I'll, that I'll do it on my own somewhere. I don't. Sometime. I don't. I don't want to risk. I, our I don't want to risk account. the show. No, it's, it's too important. It's too much. Too much is yeah. at stake here. Yeah. So so and, do you know and, anyone organizing? The whole thing about picking your battles. Like I'm a big fan of this. That I think a lot of activists. In the liberty movement, don't understand this concept. Like, are you willing to, do you want to fight this battle? Is it worth it? What are your odds of winning? How much effort is going to go into it? Right. How much of your life are you sacrificing? Uh, there, there, there comes a time when these things don't get weighed out by a lot of people, and they really should. What were you saying, Neil? I was just wondering if you knew of anything local that was being organized for it. Um, if you actually go to their, their website, there is something that is in the works in Manchester. It's oh. specifically, like, there's all these little, like, boob pictures across the, the global map. And Manchester, New Hampshire is one of the boobs. Or actually, it's actually two boobs. And, um, yeah, there's something going on, but I don't know exactly what it is. Are these disjointed boobs? Like, they're, no, they're, there's they're a very, pair. they're very symmetrical. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's nice. It's really good. Okay. I, I support so two the boobs. Poops. 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 I totally Poops. support Poops. equality Poops. of the Poops. genders Poops. when it comes to what's considered nakedness. So that that that's that got uh, Fleming Freedom is coming back shortly. Stay tuned. This is going to start sounding really unprofessional <laughs> because I have the hiccups. <laughs> so I'm going to yes. let you guys carry the show okay. for a little while here. Nice. I'm going to take my 30 percent now. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. Bless you. Um, so, Lauren, I want you to talk about the SLU and Chelsea Manning. Yeah, well, it was suppo- it, the actual headline I had was totally different. But, you know, once again, Windows, thank you for, <laughs> for eating everything. Um, so there's a lot of talk lately about Chelsea Manning. and By the way, you're listening to a- Flaming Freedom on we- Liberty Radio Network <laughs> and on Ustream. <laughs>
Go ahead. Oh, I was waiting for the hiccup. Sorry. Um, <laughs> this is Dale. And, and Lauren, too. And, and Hi. Neil. All right, carry on. <laughs> okay. Are you all right? I have a he- I was just, I, I coughed really hard, and then my head, like, oh, God. Just uh, this suddenly having, like, We're, I felt totally fine, and now all of a sudden I'm, like, a barrage of symptoms. I just don't want you to, like, pass out on the air. No, it's, it's, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. I'm being a baby. I'm mm-hmm. fine. Okay. Carry on. Well, there's, um, currently the, the ACLU was, is, gosh, Dale, wow, is yeah. sort of threatening to, well, threatening might be a funny word, but they by, they set a deadline, I think it was, might have been October 1st or something like that, where if, um, Chelsea Manning was not receiving some kind of a uh, hormone replacement therapy or hormone therapy uh, that they would actually sue the Department of Defense or something to that effect. And well, one, it's kind of funny to like put out an ultimatum like that, like, oh, we'll su- we're going to sue you. We, m- we might sue you instead of just saying like, OK, we'll sue you. I mean, maybe that's partially due to a, a, f- a lack of funding or like an inability to be prepared to do that by a certain point. So that's why they set a deadline. But but ultimately, like, I think I really want to take a moment to talk about why this is really silly and, and it really shouldn't be a big deal. And people are making a big deal about it. And, like people argue about it from the perspective of, wow, this is really expensive. It's going to be a big life changing thing. And there's, there's people who are comparing it to like, well, why don't we just give people plastic surgery and why don't we do this and do that? Hormone therapy is not very expensive. Um, if you don't have any insurance at all, it's about twenty five dollars a month. To, right. to, to do a male to female hormone therapy. It's not 20, bad. I think it's bucks. the idea of it. The people mm-hmm. have not accepted it as a medical condition. Right. And on top of that, they don't care about prisoners. Yes. And they don't understand that, you know, they complain about paying for prisoners uh, medical treatment when th- we have a country that locks up the most people in the world, regardless of population. Again, we outdo China who has way more people than us, and then we consider them to be so tyrannical. Yeah. Right? But we lock up more of our population. We is a funny And we're a smaller yes. country. Yeah. And, and I know what I you agree. mean. I agree. Shouldn't, I shouldn't say we. I had no part in it. Within the, the confines of the, That's collectivist the place speech. that we call the United States. Yeah. It's collectivist yeah. speech, and I, I shouldn't do that. No, because okay. I don't I don't approve of it. I didn't do it. Well, so you're I saying, shouldn't say we. You're saying we and, like, looking at me, and I just I get kind of weirded <laughs> out by it. But, like, if you say we and I'm not, and we're not looking at each other, then I don't feel... As strange. I'm as... glad you called me out on it, though, because we should. Ge- we people should generally <laughs> what sh- avoid what that. What should we col- do, Dale? Tell us. <laughs> people should avoid that collectivist style of speech, right? Uh, because it, it it reinforces the idea that it's that it's justified that somehow we are taking part of it and making it okay. And uh, I'm sorry, I don't approve of it, and I'm not a part of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I'm sorry, if you're locking someone up, then there's a lot of things you're going to have to pay for. You have to, yes. you need to feed them properly. You need to give them medical care, and you can. I- reduce that uh, that amount of things that you have to pay if you're giving someone something that costs twenty five dollars a month like the so the cost of that versus the cost of like putting chelsea manning on suicide watch right is you know 25 right. bucks a month versus how much are you going to be paying like all of these guards to be on extra duty all the time and like feeding her through a two or like doing all you know who knows what, where yeah. is this going to lead right so and, and, and in it's fact something very simple that can really change a person's life and there's and there's tremendously high suicide rates in the trans community it's Mm -hmm. high in the gay community it's even higher in the trans community and there's tremendous amounts of evidence and science to support the idea that actual transition support works better than uh depression treating depression like treating the symptom of or sorry it's just it's a symptom the depression is a symptom of Mm -hmm. the fact that someone is being forced to live a gender that they are not it's not in line with who they are. Yeah. So, so, so treating the actual problem is way more effective than giving someone drugs for depression or whatever other thing. You know what would save a lot more money uh, is releasing Chelsea Manning. I agree. As, <gasps> Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> and then Chelsea this Manning. This is a great just, idea. Uh, Why didn't I think of this? Like you said, Chelsea <laughs> Manning can get the $25 a month uh, treatment pretty easily if uh, she were allowed to just leave as she should be. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, there's I, that. I should, I should note, by the way, Chelsea Manning is not a libertarian. She's not an activist. She's not uh, anti-war per se. Well, she, she doesn't have a this voice, very clearly. so she can't. No, she has oh, said this. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes, She's like, yes, I don't no, want no. to be depicted. I've been depicted right. as a lot of anti-war activists are using me and stuff. I, I, j- let's just be clear on that. I support Chelsea Manning. 
I don't want to put words in her mouth because she has stated I'm not an anti-war person per se. I think, you know, right. if wars are justified and so forth, that's one thing. Which, she is specific. There were some specific things that she felt strongly about and tried to call attention to. Yes. And she sh- and, and, and I am an anti-war activist, unlike Chelsea. And I just think but but that's beside the point that that um, I don't think what she did was what she did was about transparency when our governments were doing really nefarious things, in my opinion. So right. uh, regardless of what her opinion is about in general, about anti being anti-war or whatever, uh, she felt strongly about specific things that were happening. Uh, it seems to me. And mm-hmm. again, I might be putting words in her mouth again. I apologize for that. There's actually a really great blogger out there. Her, her name is um, her name is also Lauren, although she goes by the, the name Zinnia Jones on the Internet. I know um, her. Yeah. And sh- she has actually a really great piece of writing about what, you know, her visit to, to actually speak on the defense of Bradley Manning during or at the time, Bradley Manning of of this case. And and just talks about how, like, all of that aside, all of the stuff you were just talking about, whether someone's an activist or whatever, like, their persona is or their reasoning behind what they do, like, the point is, here's this person, they're behind bars, and this other person's walking free, and w- there's mm. nothing different about us. I mean, I, right. I could be in the same exact position. In fact, I was in the military, and I probably would be in jail right now if I wasn't, if I was still there. Ah, uh, because at some point you're... Your your morality steps in, and well, he, I, see, it's not about morality. Uh-huh. It's just about being a human being, and not how what where that, that kind of thing would leave you. Oh, sure, semantics. Sure. No, okay. no, no. Well, no, I'm no, I'm not talking mm-hmm. about. I'm just talking about like it's just about existing. Like that's okay. why you should really. I recommend reading this article. I don't know what it's called, um, but if you look up Zinnia Jones, you can probably find it. Uh, but really, like it's. Anyway, go, go ahead, Dale. I, I interrupted. You're saying that if you were in the military, there would be issues because of trans things, you think? Uh, probably because of that, but but mm. who, who knows? I mean... Okay. Or because of they're doing things that the public would be horrified to know about. Um, they, that their, their, their tax money is funding and things like that. Because I kind of feel it's, like that's... It's, that's it's, it's other stuff, too. It's but just it's stuff crossed the line, I think, for Chelsea. And... and it wasn't that she was anti-government. She's not a libertarian per se or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It was just that there were things that, right, but she couldn't stomach. But, uh, but to get it, back to the root of, of what we're talking about, though, it's, it's we're asking a question and we're trying to defend the fact that yes, she should get hormones. Yes, and I, as someone who have taken, I actually you, you mentioned uh, psychotropic or not psychotropic. What is it? Uh, SSRIs. You mentioned or you mentioned some kind of a like traditional depression therapy. But oh, right. Okay. About 12 years ago, I actually took for two weeks straight, I took Zoloft. I hated it. It made, it did weird things to me. And so I stopped, which is really good that I'm, I'm right. glad that, that I did. That's, that's one of those things but, that people get, raises their chance of suicide. Yes. And things like that. But I can tell you I that think, if, if or, I was taking a drug like that or taking some estrogen for, for 25 bucks a month, like I do now, I wouldn't, if I was on that, I would not be on this show. And not that I would kill myself or something, but I would just... I couldn't do it. Like I can't. the The power behind this drug that costs so little money is amazing. I would not be on the radio with you guys. I would not. I wouldn't even know you guys if it I wasn't for that. I, I wouldn't go outside I've, of my house if it I, wasn't for this drug. And it's I not just the trans. appearance stuff. It's like it changes your whole mind. And right. For you're, me, it well, your 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 chemistry and everything is in alignment with your wiring. Is yes. the way I would think yes. of it. And uh, your body and your all that as well. But the chemistry is important too. And I've heard that from so many trans people that like they like a lot of them are open up so much more to the to, they're, they're able to express themselves more honestly and openly all the time. Their confidence goes up because these issues have been a- addressed. It's a, it is a medical issue, I think. And that might upset some trans people Like, no, no, this is a choice for me. It's not a medical issue. I'm like, well, maybe it is for you. But for a lot of people, it, it is a medical issue. Either way, people's choices should be respected. And either way, we have a, a country that treats prisoners like they're not human beings, which is very disturbing to me. And it locks up way too many people. And for a lot of really horrible reasons, if someone's like raping children or something, maybe maybe that's when you got to lock them up. Uh, but but uh, serious stuff. Let's stop locking people up for stupid crap. And Chelsea Manning is not a threat to anyone. This is ridiculous. Uh, we'll be back shortly. This is Flaming Freedom, where we're LGBT libertarians shoot the poop. Stay tuned. Welcome back, folks. You are listening to Flaming Freedom, where we discuss 
LGBT issues from a liberty perspective. This is your host, Dale. And Lauren. And Neil. Oh, oh I put the and in front of my name. Those I'm so used you, to being at the end. <laughs> those of you who are listening to us on the downloaded podcast or watching us on YouTube, you can also watch us live via Ustream or listen to us live via the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. We're here every Sunday from noon to 2 Nope, from 10 a.m. to noon. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, geez, I'm going to have to skip work now. We used to do yeah. noon to two. Didn't yeah. we? Back in the days? Uh, when we used to go to Keen for every uh, show. We, 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 we've we been all over the place on the schedule. We've tried so <laughs> many different things. It just depends on when people are available to do the show. It, we, we adjust as needed. We adjust as needed. So um, did you have more thoughts on Chelsea? How do you feel about that? Well, d- just to wrap it up, I mean, it's 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 something really easy to fix. And whether or not, whatever side of this you're on, whether or not you think it's right or wrong, it's just something really s- small and simple. And it should just be able we, to be done on her own. And I want to stop locking people. Here's my summation. we we'll wrap it up. I want to stop. I want to stop locking so many people up for stupid crap. And secondly, if we do lock them up, I want to treat them like human beings. And if you want to lock someone up, that doesn't if you, make if you sense. don't lock them up, if you don't lock them up, what? That doesn't make, you can't lock someone up and treat them like a human being. I'm saying, <laughs> I, I, I know, I, I know. I, I get I'm your sorry. point. I'm, you're, you're, I'm with you. But, but my, my point is we I'm shouldn't be locking outraged. them up in the first place. But, yes. but if I can't convince you of that and you insist on locking people up for stupid crap, not because they're a psychotic killer who can't be controlled. <laughs> uh, if you insist on locking people up for stupid crap, Let's have humane. Let's, let's try. Let's treat them as human beings. Let's have some humanity. Let's let's some humane treatment in prisons, and and, and this is bare minimum. Twenty five bucks a month for uh, what I consider to be a medical condition that will prevent her from committing suicide, quite possibly. Let's do that. Uh, this is ridiculous. That's my that's my opinion on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Um. We we were yeah. talking about men going their own way during the break. Yes, yeah, so I want to cover that actually. Thank you for thank you for bringing that up, Neil. So this is a new thing for you. You're uh, being introduced to the concept. I was exposed to it the first time when you uh, told me that, about some Reddit controversy on that on that subreddit. But uh, and you just explained explained briefly in in one sentence what they were doing, which is basically. Uh, they're taking the agorist option out of a fem- <laughs> uh, what they see as a feminist-controlled society, <laughs> both legally and uh, culturally, uh, where you... women have so much uh, default um, legal power over over men. Lauren, and, uh, if you put that up, oh, no, I will I position it. it where it's okay. No, it's, it's cool. Okay, I, I have a plan. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So. Uh, well, um, if you if you look at, um, I, I missed a little bit what you said because of distractions. But if you if you, but I got some of it. So if you look at how the world, uh, to a large extent, the world has become a hostile environment for men to be in relationships. A lot, a lot of it is the state, and a, and a lot of the state has been shaped into what it is by feminism. Which is, if you look at feminism, it it purports purports. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure. To sure. be a movement about modernizing gender roles and making women equal to men. But in reality, what it does is it's almost like cave women. I mean, it's almost like throwbacks where we need it. Like it's asking for more and more protection from women for women. It's asking for more and more coddling of women, more and more perks for women, uh, for men to uh, it's saying that men have all the power and only men can do this. It, 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 I don't want to I, I, I risk being derailed too much, but. But uh, but what feminism has done is turn the state against men <laughs> very effectively. They, they, it's been an incredibly effective movement, uh, and and it's been um, and and what happens is some, some men are fighting it. They're they're becoming MRAs, men's rights activists, and these are people who claim to be for true gender equality. And you can we could argue endlessly about what you know who's more right, feminist or men's rights activists or whatever. Uh, both of them claim to be for equality. Right. Both of them say, well, and but men's rights activists are saying feminists are ignoring men's rights and feminists are saying men's rights. Uh, we care about men's rights, too. Uh, you just don't. We just we never actually do anything, but we, we do. We care. <laughs> and then, <laughs> that's not what they're saying. But but um, but anyway, so there's the men's rights activists and then there are men going their own way. Short short term is MGTOW or MGTOW. And those guys are saying we're just 
pulling out. We're not going to fight this battle. We're just going to stop playing the game because the game is so stacked against us. You know, if, if a man and a woman have any kind of breakup, almost inevitably the woman is going to benefit from a divorce dramatically. And, and divorce is just one thing. There's also just the idea that, you know, men are supposed to buy dinner and buy drinks for women and, and, and women have tremendous expectations of men just because vagina, right? I have vagina. <laughs> you must do things. You must adjust yourself to please me. Well, why are they still doing it? What's that? Why are the men still doing it? Why do the men uh, buy drinks? Well, some of them are stopping. I mean, that's the thing. Right. Uh, and, and, and think, women can certainly, you know, yeah. try to try to stop because that Because women have power well. over men. Uh, it, here's the thing. If you have something that someone else desires, if you control a resource that is a, 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 of great desire by someone else, mm-hmm. you have power over them. Well, I think sh- feminists reject this and they don't want to they don't want to because it doesn't feed into the victim complex that feminism is trying to create. But the fact that men greatly desire women has meant women have always had a, a kind of power. It's not the obvious. Why doesn't it work in reverse? Women certainly aren't men, and if men desire, uh, if women desire men, and, and the uh, the phallic uh, objects that they uh, possess, it, then why doesn't it work in the reverse? That women way? women do not have the same degree of desire for men that men have for well, women. Well, because they are already really? they're already going their own way because they already realize that they are they can be happy and they could have those intimate relationships with uh, with women and they don't need to have those really, no i'm no you're i'm very sorry. biased you're a lesbian no no, so. no i'm not just talking about i mean like yeah like, well there's that like please i recommend that go for it but um what i'm actually saying is that women have a lot more I- I- intimacy in their relationships whether it's with men or women or whoever it's really a lot different than it is with with men as a man like you a lot of men get really focused on that romant that single romantic relationship or maybe multiple partners too but that there's like th- and that woman that they find is their whole world like that is it they are so in love and that and they're obsessed with it and so there's there's a lot more obsession when it comes to the desires of men than with women with women they can they can achieve that and they have been achieving that probably their whole lives that real intimacy that emotional I, intimacy i'm going to be completely honest with you i'm not following at all i, I don't get you want that. some drugs for a few <laughs> no no i i, I would say out? that men um if you want to get into the, the like the innate biological natures men are are their caveman nature is to spread their seed uh, all across the land everybody's always talking about spreading seed it really creeps i'm sorry me well, it, I, oh, well it's, it's so hot it's, i think that's <laughs> that's that's the caveman nature now i'm not saying that that's what we should pursue i think modern people should pursue modern what fits with modern life okay and reality and objective reality well but, but I'm not, there's I'm not but there's our cave, sex, there's our like there's the difference i'm talking about like a deeply romantic desirable relationship i'm glad you brought like, that i up. know like it's we're I'm not glad just you all brought about that up. we're not just all about effing each other I, I get that i get that but i but uh i think i i think i think i think i have a beef with that when you're talking about romantic relationships, you cannot discount sex and sexual drives I'm and not sexual needs. I'm not discounting it, but I'm saying that because they're, that they're... we were talking about my relationship with Neil. Neil and I have an intimate relationship. We're, we're very close friends. We we uh, we don't have sex. We're not interested in having sex mm-hmm. with each other. I take care of his cat when he's gone. But but that I don't think of <laughs> yeah, that I... as like Neil and I are not going to get married and and just be a non-sexual couple. That's not going to become a romantic relationship. Sex is a key defining factor in what makes that relationship different. Well, maybe this is what it is for men, like because women can get that without sex. Maybe that is. Maybe that is. That's the power difference. Of course, sex is a. Women have sexual power over men, right? Because their sex drives are not as strong. No, maybe their sex drives are as strong, but they don't require it. And frankly, I frank, frankly, I think. I mean, I'm going to be. I'm a little dangerously honest here. I think a lot of what women are looking for out of a man is 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 sort of is sort of a on a certain level is just resources because they can provide resources. If you're oh, if you're oh, having boy. kids, if you're having babies and stuff, you can't do that yourself necessarily. You're devoted to that, and <sighs> men can provide those resources. There's that, and there's then and there's other emotional stuff. That I think and it's not necessarily in perfect alignment. This is these are just things you have to work out in a relationship. We'll, we'll continue this I discussion when we say. come back. This is Flaming Freedom. Lauren's going to reply. Stay tuned. Welcome back, folks. Neil and Lauren are about to tear into me for saying, speaking in a bunch of generalizations without references. And uh, fair enough. No, fair it's enough. okay. No, it's, it's, it's fair enough. I mean, 
we will discuss this. But well, I kind of feel like... I've just heard that a million times. Like, yeah. men are designed to spread their seed, and then men are going <laughs> to spread it's it true. all over you. Because and it's true. It's like, I don't want that. I'm talking stop. about biology, and I'm talking about cavemen. It's biology, damn it. I'm going to spread my seed on you, and you... you're going to like it. And I'm like, uh, no, no. You're no. not going to like it, uh, because women don't have the same desires. <laughs> You've been mistaking too many Bukake films for, for nature documentaries, Dale. Uh... I, we should make a farmer uh, bukkake film about spreading seed. <laughs> Look, okay, and, I, and you're right. I didn't bring <laughs> up children's I, rhymes. All right, you're, you're listening. To, you're listening to <laughs> Flaming Freedom. Those who, I just being myself. You're listening. No, I, to, I didn't really. You're listening to Flaming Freedom. This is your host, Dale. Lauren and Wait, Neil. Do I and, say and? I'm used to saying and because I'm at the end. I just have to put a comma. It after, I'll put a comma after my name. It's not time. important. Okay, grammar. So. I, 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 in, the, in their defense, I did not quote references and things, but the subject came up out of the blue. I wasn't expecting to discuss it today. But this is kind of gets into why I am increasingly skeptical of, of these very traditional notions of monogamous relationships and why people, and, and the reasons people do it. I think so. How much of it is biology and how, how much of it is just culturally induced? How much of gender? These, these are. These are huge questions. I don't have the answers to these questions, but I don't. I feel like people are not honest about a lot of it. it, it you have to, for instance, take into account there's there's a few biological facts that men have stronger sex drives than women. I'm not saying men don't care about other things. Obviously, they do. In fact, I think a lot of men strongly desire a monogamous relationship with a woman. But but there's and then there's but there are issues to resolve if you want to make that happen. I'm not sure what. I'm not sure how Mono much faith I have. Would you like me to tell you why monogamy? I mean, monogamy yeah. exists because people want it to exist. They desire it. Right. How much but of that desire is shaped by culture, But we might have a biology that doesn't though. fit the desire. Like, we might right. have some, like, really, and I don't know if this is the right word, but Neil, correct me if I'm wrong, cerebral or, like, you know, very thoughtful, like, like intellectual-based idea that we want to be with someone at the, the most intimate level that we can, like even so that we sort of even become like almost one person. Vulcan mind that, meld. Like, yeah, <laughs> like we, we really want that level of intimacy, but we might yeah. not be biologically capable of having it. We're mm. not Vulcans. We can't well, do, the, uh, do the thing with the To touching. some extent, we agree then. So I, I think that that's to where some extent. the idea of marriage, monogamy, that whole thing comes from is because people think that that's the right thing to do and we're trying to achieve it. And well, let's times talk we might about fall marriage. Short of that. Marriage, uh, marriage emerged from STDs. <laughs> I'm, I'm STDs sorry, inspired I just, marriage. Into the mic. No, Are you serious? And monogamy. Wait, First of all, Lauren, you're, I, you're wrong. I want to hear more about that. But. John Luke Picard and Spock's father were able to complete a Vulcan mind meld, and Picard is is Homo sapiens, and Spock's father was Vulcan. So I you thought, don't have to both be wait, Vulcan to do a, didn't a Vulcan Didn't Spock do it with a whale? Once? One of them has to be. And by do it, I meant the mind meld. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Wait, when they went to San Francisco? God, yeah. Let's okay. not deteriorate into Star Trek because it's not consistent. Okay? Not even remotely. They, they can, they, uh, it's like no, the Bible. No, it's so, about as consistent as the no, Bible. Star, Star Trek is very it's, consistent. It's not worse. And, yeah. and correct all the time. Yeah, he did mind realm with Mark. the, with they, the they, they did yeah. time travel as well. The Vulcans are telepathic, essentially. And they can do telepathy with non-telepaths to some degree or another. Anyway, back to the subject. <laughs> okay. I, I do. I am kind of speaking to some extent in generalities and everything. Uh, I don't, I don't, there are, but there's like this is a spontaneous subject that came up, mm -hmm. but uh, I feel like we're, we're kind of in denial. There's certain facts we have to take into account. Like recently on the show, we talked about this guy who, who made a log of his wife's rejections for sex. Mm -hmm. And this was a monogamous relationship. And it was like, she was rejecting him like four out of five times. He would ask for sex. No, I, excuse uh, ask for sex no headache ask for sex no um i'm on my period whatever there was like a excuse 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 and out of like 15 attempts she got like two or three sexual actual sex right and so these 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 two people were incompatible in their sexual drives sure uh, but she that didn't want to have sex he did that's all it came down to how women frequently. and men it doesn't matter it's usually how? the guy wait, wait. <laughs> Come on, come on! Like all, all being, the testosterone is linked to sex drive, and men have more of it. Okay, um, it is it is absolutely linked to sex drive. This is scientific fact. It's biology. So women who have more testosterone are more sex driven. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so and why? there are certain well, uh, some women do have more testosterone so, than other women, and they tend to be more the next have a higher sex drive. The next date rape drug. 
should be <laughs> testosterone <laughs> patches that are uh, applied and absorbed subdermally. Uh, interesting. I, right? I think it probably takes time. I don't think testosterone can be like slap it on and like you get a burst of testosterone now, right this second. Yeah, I don't think sex. that they have. I don't, uh, I don't know about that. Subdermal testosterone. I think they, you, have, you have to inject it or you have to. No, but they have. Uh, indeed, they have testosterone gel. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can. Oh, there is a, yeah. there's a gel. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, it, it, they typically put it on their shoulders or either around the the uh, genital region. They're both receptive to. That kind of absorption. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, speaking of date rape drugs, uh, Florida is trying to pass a, um, a, ca- a medical cannabis bill, yeah. and uh, the opposing side is publishing uh, articles with like a man uh, holding a you know a woman's shoulder, oh, and in his that. back pocket there's a medical marijuana cookie. And they said the next date rape drug, a marijuana cookie. Oh lord! This is what. <laughs> So these donors. Uh, so want. so men going their own way. We started off talking about that. We talked about the difference between, differences between men and women and what they want. The other thing I was going to say that I think, uh, and I am talking to my ass here. There's no studies on this. This is, but but ass there, talking. Well, I'm Dale. allowed to bring up these opinions. Okay, <laughs> Neil I look does at, that I all think the time. women are often he looking for validation and and self esteem in a relationship. They're looking for a guy. Uh, there's something about a guy. Being desirous of them that enhances their self esteem. And right men look for that in women too. Uh, to a lesser extent, to a much lesser extent, yes. Uh, really? Yes. You know Dude, what? I, I hate people. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's the thing as a trans person, I think, and, I, and a lot of this, I think trans people, when they're going through transition, they're like, wow, my, how I feel about things is changing. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Guess what? There's a difference between men and women. Yeah. Women and there, women, there is. women and men. Have different desires it's and true. motivations and things like that no, because it, it our chemistry true. is dramatically different. Right, but someone with confidence, like we all want someone with confidence, whether you're a man so or a woman. So when I say, yeah, men are more this way and women are more this way, it gets you in a lot of trouble saying those kinds of things. But I think, but, and there's studies to back th- different things up, but then there's also just common sense and what we look at in, 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 in relationships and how they go. And, uh, and I feel it feels kind of ridiculous that we cannot discuss these these sub, these subjects. And I have I'm increasingly of the opinion that monogamy is a social construct that may that may not actually make much sense. And when we're looking at like how do we as a society well, have kids, people. raise kids, reproduce, and all that stuff, and also satisfy our needs for relationships, and maybe monogamy is not like the best thing for for even a lot for quite a lot of people. I don't know. We, yeah, yeah, for I, men I don't and know women, either. you know, and, and I think maybe to some extent, like men and women both need to look at, okay, what are my needs? How do I get my needs met? And maybe monogamy just isn't as, as brilliant yeah. of a solution as people think it is. During the next segment, can we find out why people don't like my name? Yes. We need to, be, I, I'm really worried. I've been, that will I've be. been we're going to move on from this the whole time. Thank All you right. folks. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be back in a few minutes. Welcome back to Claiming Freedom. This is your host, Dale. And, uh, and Lauren and Neil. I'm used to being three, so, so just my wrapping, timing is all off. Wrapping this up real quick during the break, Neil said, uh, "Is it okay to say? Sure, I guess. Mig towels. A lot of mig towels are driven. He thinks he just discovered them, by the way. But he says a lot of mig towels, men going their own way, are that way because they're not attractive and they can't get women. So, uh, <laughs> and it's, which is interesting because I've heard the exact same thing about feminists. I, I, I'm just I saying that that is a, probably a, a, something that a factor a that plays into the decision to be a MGTOW. Because honestly, with sexuality, and, and I understand asexuals and the lack of a sexual drive and perhaps the desire for coupling, but not not any of that, and that there are those people out there. But those don't seem to be... From the description, MGTOWs, those are people that would otherwise be attracted to uh, they, the they opposite are. sex. They and, are attracted and, to the opposite sex generally. Right, but and, they're rejecting that. So I don't right. see how... Uh, but they're not, re- they're not necessarily rejecting sex, but they're no. rejecting deep relationships. And because if they were offered of the it, of course they, they, they wouldn't. It, some MGTOWs, I would say, actually are just, just doing without sex and preferring okay. it that way. So, uh, so I think maybe to a degree, there might be some that are that way. Just as I think there might be some feminists who are who are who their motivation for being feminists is because they're not attractive. There's a women. lot of really attractive feminists, but I don't want to say that about all there. feminists. I mean, I, I'm not oh, going to sure. generalize that, but I think there probably is that might be a factor for some feminists that they're I not attractive. Know. I don't know because if you're an attractive woman, you can benefit. I've from never met someone who calls themselves a feminist who's not attractive. <laughs> What's that? 
I've never met someone who calls themselves a feminist who is also not attractive. Well, just go online. Find uh, I don't think. I can. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't. I, I mean, don't. You go ahead and yeah. find me one. I dare you. Yeah. Uh, Good luck. Yeah, look at any U.S. prosecutor. Any U.S. attorney. They any, don't call. Look, f- I am homophobic. <laughs> Federal employees aren't aren't feminists. I am. Uh, I am. I, I I must admit, I am very homophobic when it comes to Federal employees. lesbian federal employees. You said federal or, employees or are not feminists? essentially female yeah, but, but, uh, federal employees who I highly suspect at being butch lesbians. But they're they're hiding it, right? Or they're just like suppressing that? No, Chana no. Napolitano is not suppressing I, 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 that. Wait, is she is she gay? <laughs> let me let me say something. <laughs> sure, I, I know I dominate the show sometimes, but is. let me just inter- like, intercede for a moment because yeah. I don't want anyone to. I, I just said some stuff, and I don't want people to read too much into it. I think in general, I don't think that's the case. What's, I think there's. I mean, I think you could probably account for some portion of the movement of feminism and some portion oh, of the movement. being attractive, feminists being Let attractive. Me, please, I don't know. Inter- what, I will what's explain the, what's it. the case, though. Give what me a is, moment. What is it you're talking about? <laughs> oh, people don't interrupt each other so much on SLA. Right, I don't understand what, this. How does this? Ha- All right. So, I don't think it generally is the case. I don't think you can explain feminism in general because they're not attractive. Or be- this is a stereotype. Right, and it's a stereo- and Neil brought it up for MGTOWs, okay, and probably okay. for MRAs to some extent. This is because because feminists are fond of calling MRAs um, men's rights activists. They're call- fond of calling them uh, neckbeard. What do they call it? Uh, neckbeard uh, fedoras, right? Basically, <laughs> in, 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 <laughs> no, their, in their so parents' confused. basement. This isn't helping. They're calling them unattractive, and that's why they're okay. Okay, MRAs. okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Okay, okay neckbeard okay, fedora is just a stereotype of a certain kind of nerdy guy who can't get women. And, and, but men have been saying that about feminists for a long time, and it always pissed me off. Like, feminists, they're feminists because they're not attractive. Mm-hmm. But on some level, I go, okay, yeah, there's probably some. I don't think generally that's the case. And I think it's probably, Neil has said it about MGTOWs. That might be the case sometimes, but I don't think generally that is the case for either of them. I think both of them are engaging in hypocrisy when well, they do that. But MGTOWs are a seemingly a different breed because they're rejecting uh, at all any, um, you know, this entire aspect of life that seems to be completely integral to uh, to them who they they do claim they're still attracted to. It's something that they would want otherwise had it not been for this societal archetype and in, in, in legal, um, you know, system. So I, I think mm-hmm. that would be a high factor that plays into uh, MGTOWs, given the fact that they're admittedly also straight. Which you'd think the natural recourse would be uh, going gay, because like <laughs> you can't just go gay, Neil. Women can do that because they're more bisexually oriented, but guys have a more w- hardwired sexual well, orientation. Look, than the, women they, it's hard for women too. Yeah, no? uh, a little, but not as hard. I mean, women have a much more <laughs> have a higher inclination for bisexuality than men do. Again, <laughs> again, differences between men and women. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. It's really hard for men. They're different. Uh, That's men a are great more pun. hardwired. <laughs> So I don't know if some of the the wig towels, the women going their own way, I think they have done that because they are more bisexually oriented. Some of them are like, I'm done with men, and they become lesbians, and they can do that. I don't think men can do that as easily. It's a shame. I, I believe me, I wish they could. One of the wig towels. Uh, I wish a lot of straight men would say, I'm just going to start dating gay guys because I'm done with this crap. But they they just not. They can't do that. There as should easily. be a planet of men and a planet of uh, of women. And uh, the women can have Venus, and they'll scorch and burn and and uh, die off. And and men can have Mars and can terraform the planet, and then it'd be <laughs> one homoerotic uh, male homoerotic, uh, you know, right. play place. We've right? upset people plenty with this topic. I think we can now move on. I'm, I'm upset because I'm confused. Jk, but thanks uh, for clarifying earlier. So this is an inside joke about your name, Lauren. Yeah. So we I put that. Uh, Someone is not, um, he says that Lauren will have to change her name. We can call her that weird pedo girl. <laughs> um, his wife is named Lauren. Oh, okay. That's all. I see. He, he's, well, there's a lot of yeah. Lauren people out there. So this is just people in the movement having the same name and we're the all buddies. Movement. Yeah, that makes it sound so ominous. W- which movement is it that? It just means people. No, it just makes me want to yeah. use the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Lauren, how did you Libertarians become... Libertarians shooting the poop, right? So, go ahead. How did you become the pedo girl? Well, because I messed something up. I, I reversed a few words. We were supposed to talk about uh, child robots 
for pedophiles, but I I talked about <laughs> pedophile or what was pedophile it? Ped- robots. Pedophile sex robots for children. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I feel really bad. In case your child wants to have sex with an adult, but you don't want <laughs> and, to get that right. adult put in prison. In case, in case you want to create it. <laughs> <laughs> they make pedophile robots. So can you? Uh, can this you, subject will not die. Can None you imagine? It keeps coming up now. Can you imagine a whorehouse for children? <laughs> Oh, oh God! Stop! Yeah, we're moving on. <laughs> for adult sure robots. Now. I'm done with this. So, I am done. The, the madam of the house. You know, right, you, we're moving. <laughs> on. So this person didn't say that they didn't like my name. They just said that I have to oh. change it. No, it's just because your name is the same as someone else's, and it's confusing. <laughs> okay. Well, I thought about actually getting. <laughs> so like, you're now that pedo girl. That's what we're gonna put. Oh <laughs> no, I know who this is. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. His, yeah. No, she actually. If anybody gets to take the name Lauren, she gets the yeah, name Lauren. She's, she's the king kind of, of Laurens. She is kind of a monumental activist. Yeah. Oh yes. You you so. could even have like a McDonald's play place on the side. With oh the ball God! P- He's not going to end the subject, <laughs> Neil. Oh okay. God! I, even I am a- uncomfortable now <laughs> at this point. I mean, I I have a sense of humor and all, but oh my God! All right. It's not funny. We're gonna we're gonna. Um. Yeah. <sighs> okay. I'm okay. I'm I'm breathing. Um. <laughs> yeah. So. I, this I, is like this might be our most offensive show ever, and I wasn't I'm, aiming for that. But and, and came sometimes from, I'm it, aiming for it. Imagine it sometimes it's accidental. I, we've upset feminists. We've upset MGTOWs. We've upset MRAs. We've up, upset uh, anyone who's against pedophilia, which is like everyone. I know, and except I like, for three I, people. Earlier, I interrupted you, and I was like, "What?" And you're like, "What?" And we're like, "Huh?" Imagine, <laughs> That's imagine, what and it's, it's it's horribly offensive. Imagine an ET sex bot that lures the children with Stop. Reese's pieces. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> that's a comic strip that's coming together in my head now god damn it god damn it neil um we were supposed to talk about uh, it, it makes, we, brings we, to mind jokes about et stepping on his balls <laughs> ouch oh because he's so short and his and his feet are right by there his, i don't know his uh crotch like drags against the ground oh. i can't speak right now Okay. All right. So when we come back, we're going to talk about this this kid who who died, and now <laughs> they terrible. wanted to donate his organs <laughs> and couldn't because he was gay. And not all of them, anyway, because of stupid terrible. FDA oh, no. crap. Uh, we're, we'll actually talk about something serious in the last segment. This is Flaming Freedom. We'll be right back. So stay tuned. You folks are so lucky that you missed the discussion during the break. Except I'm going to rehash it for you. I was pointing out how I am so grateful. This is Flaming Freedom, by the way. I am so it grateful is. that I might finally, and my as I've aged a bit, and I'm okay with this. I'm going. I'm you know I'm older. My sex drive has tapered off finally a little, like to a reasonable degree. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm no longer like I must stick my penis in every wet hole I can find. I must spread my seed. We were talking about guys spreading their seed. Yes. It's like if I could, I, was I would a little like creeped out. I, if I could, I could just have like this sprinkler style penis that would just spew seed out like a sprinkler and just spray a circumference around me all over the world all over all the Seep into you know, all the crevices. diverse <laughs> men women and children of the world it could be like an epcot ride <laughs> it would just seep into all the crevices it would be gallons and gallons and gallons like a like a sprinkler all right mm-hmm. let's move on <laughs> you should get that checked out <laughs> no i'm good now i'm good i oh, okay. said finally uh we'll talk about a viewer comment on shipping on supernatural shipping if we get to it but it's not looking hopeful at this point so a teenager died of uh committed suicide and he wanted his organs to go mm. to uh to to others who needed them mm-hmm. and his heart could go out Okay. Based on FDA regulations, but not his eyes. Okay. I guess maybe this is an issue of if it's critical, like, because they're terrified of someone getting AIDS from his eyes, I guess. Okay. Because um, <laughs> he was gay and he had had sex with other boys at some point. Mm-hmm. And, he, it, but, but so that's why I called this segment and it was confusing for you, Lauren. Do gays have the evil eye? And the FD, this is best, apparently it's part of like, like blood, like donating blood. If you've had sex with men, you can't do it. Yes. Yeah. No, they, they ask that every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
If you've so, had men since, uh, if you've had sex with men since 1972, uh, no, no, I just started ridiculous. recently. It's you know? ridiculous. Yeah, well, I that's mean, the thing. They're like, have, have you had sex science with- has progressed so much, and we know now that, you, that what they should be asking people is, are you having safe sex? Are you are you right. having? Have you had sex with a lot of people in recent times? Have you been tested for HIV? Do you I mean, you know? It, are you willing to have like public testing of for HIV or something? Like these are things that would be. It's all about risk factors. And yes, gay people. If you're actively gay, you are in a higher risk factor. But there's all the other things that are risk factors, and it's not just a gay disease. And, and it's it's ridiculous to just ban completely. I understand. Like there are so many factors to reduce that risk factors. So many. Th- have you been tested regularly? I mean, they're just asking you on. They're just. It's just honor system anyway. So you could just lie, and there's no you could. repercussions. Yeah. Unless there's somehow. I, I guess if there were somehow like documented evidence that you had had sex with a guy or something, which is kind of ridiculous. I, but but so you could by the same reasoning they could ask you, have you been tested since? Have you been tested for HIV regularly? And you could say yes. I I test every year. And it's negative every time, and I use safe sex. And now you've dramatically reduced that risk factor, and they also test the blood anyway. Right. Because <laughs> it's easier so, to test. I don't know So how there's often... so many things reducing the risk factor that it's ridiculous to have this, this, this sweeping ban on gay men donating blood. Go ahead. I think it is kind of silly to have that sweeping ban, and I think all the points that you brought up are really valid. And we're in New Hampshire, so we the Red Cross is the people who primarily handle any kind of blood donation in terms of the tissue or blood donation. Um, I think there are other parts of the world where they still they actually do that they're no they don't say well have you had sex with men okay i'm sorry you're, you're barred the, the, right the i think the rhode island blood center is they, they ask more about safe sex than they talk, ask about actual sex with if it's men in the u.s it doesn't matter i don't think they're allowed to i had this on silent what oh the there's a little, little man talking in my head um <laughs> why I, I don't think they can in the u.s it, it's not about the red cross it's about government it's this is a, this is a private organization. Oh uh, well, I don't know that that matters. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I, I, would be, I, I, I have to look into it more. I really am not an expert on it, but either um, way, for this guy, he committed suicide. So yeah. it's not as if they asked him before donating his organs these questions. So uh, they're assuming, based on either public statement or that of his parents or anything of the fact, rather than his own admission. Right. So I would like to know what they're basing that on. Uh, nevertheless, I thought HIV tests were uh, very, very quick. I mean, sure, you could have a more comprehensive one, but uh, apparently there's like a cheek swab or a quick blood um, blood test mm-hmm. that will reveal the presence of it before any eyes would expire for trans uh, transplant. Yes. Yeah, no, the, this, yeah. the technology is there. I mean... This is very upsetting for me. I, I this, this has always been... I tried to go... I actually... As a kind of activism, when I was in college, I went to the... I had donated blood, by the way, before I started actually having sex with men. I never lied. Yes, you, you've... I never lied on a on their questionnaire. But they barraged me with questions when I finally did. I actually went one time just to kind of stick it in their face. This is ridiculous. I went and I answered all their questions honestly. And they rejected me for donating blood. And they, and they were, like, terrified all of a sudden. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then they found... I guess they found I had donated blood before, but that was before I was sexually active. I had, and it, it was not, I was not in the higher risk group or whatever. And I got a call and they were asking me extremely personal questions. Like to find out, oh, we got to find, we have to contact these people that got your blood before and, and tell them they might have been contaminated. They were so ridiculous. It was offensive as hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish I could have just told them, like, look, I've never lied on the questionnaire. They were asking me things from memory. And I'm like, I don't know this from memory. All I know is when I answered the questionnaire before, I answered it honestly. No, I had not had sex with me. Obviously, I wouldn't have been able to donate blood. So they were asking me, when did you do, have sex for the first time? And I was still like going, screw you. It's none of your goddamn business. Yeah. You know? So anyway, let me um, let me get to this uh, comment and reply to Sabriel about slash fiction on Supernatural. We've talked about this the last uh, on a couple of episodes before. Okay. He says it's 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 like this. Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about, right, Neil? Mm-hmm. And you what? do because you've. I was on that show. Yeah, Super, slash fiction and supernatural. Well, like, I, know, I know of the concept. Do you know what okay. shipping is? Same thing. Shipping. 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 Does it have to do with Peter Schiff? No ship. Shipping. Like shipping. Like shipping and receiving. It's this. It's another word for slash fiction, basically. No, I don't know it in that context. Yeah, me neither. 
Yeah, now you do. But now oh. we do. Now it means the same thing. So okay. in response to Sabriel's comments on the last show, she says it's like this. Much like Wincess, the writers learned about Destiel and made some jokes about it. Are we going to have time to read this whole Wait, time? what's Wincess? I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> the first shipping was between Sam and Dean. And they're the main characters on the show, and they're brothers. So, yeah, And their yeah. last name is Winchester. <gasps> so they called it Wincess. Oh. Winchester incest. Oh. See this? My, I always thought that wincest was like, oh, there's some incest there. Win, win yeah, with that too. I, I think that's probably. I think that's probably part of the uh, <laughs> oh, okay. the thing. It's still going on, but uh, later on in the show, a bigger relationship tease has been between Dean and Castiel, and then it's not sexual in the show. Let's just be. I don't. I don't think it is. But people ship it, right? They they read into it and they write stories about it. Right, and they Dean package and it and send it across the country. <laughs> yes, I get it. <laughs> I guess. I'm not sure why it's called. Sorry. Why is it called shipping? I'm not sure. I, I'm i going to have to talk to Sabriel. Yeah. So she's, what she's saying is the writers have made some jokes about it because it is a big thing in the fandom, and they acknowledge it. But acknowledging the fandom and and even making some jokes about it is not the same as making it canon. And, 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 and like just because, and, and, and she, what her point is, I'm going to summarize it because it's a fairly long comment. Her point is the, the writers have no problem with people shipping and joking about it. They even joke about it in the show and all, but it just that they've never implied it's going to become canon it's, and they're okay with. So she's saying that, uh, there's really no basis for the shippers to be upset with the writers or Dean or, or not Dean, but, uh, the guy who plays him, uh, Jensen Ackles because he isn't. He has said, no, it's not going to be canon, mm -hmm. but they're not saying that it's bad that you're doing this, right? They're not being intolerant of people shipping. They're, they're saying, yeah, have fun with it. That's your thing. That's your fiction. Enjoy it. But it's not going to become canon, and they're not teasing people that it is. They're just making jokes about it because it's such a big thing. And I kind of, I kind of tend to agree with this, with this person. Uh, I, I understand Sabriel... You know, we, there aren't enough gay. There's not enough gay stuff in, in shows and everything, uh, and there should be more. And there's starting to be more. Teen Wolf is starting to incorporate some, but not with main characters. But and that's frustrating. Um, it's starting to become more of a thing. But in the meantime, uh, Supernatural is not being intolerant of shippers. That's, that's kind of what she's saying. Just because they don't want to make it canon, they're not planning on making it canon. But that doesn't mean that they. You guys are being so quiet. I'm trying to quit I'm, talking I'm, here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. First people get on to me for talking too much. Well, I, I, it, so. And then. I, I'm just going to go home and YouTube Gay Teen Wolf. Just to see that. Oh, I, my I'm God. Not, yeah, I am not willing to watch an uh, entire series like that. Dude, one. it is soft porn. Teen Wolf is, you won't be, even, it's a good show, first of all. Lately, I've gotten a little bored, more bored with it. But for at least the first three or so seasons, mm. soft, good show and soft porn. I'll have to, to check it out. This has been Dale. And Lauren. And Neil. Join us for Flaming Freedom Live next week from 10 a.m. to noon on the Liberty Radio Network.